One more number today from the mighty Cream, a fantastic wailing blues with Eric Clapton playing like he's fixing to blow your mind and stepping out. <laughs> Anytime that I hear a guitar player say that they don't get why Eric Clapton is considered a legend of the instrument, I send them that track. If you don't recognise it, it's called Stepping Out by Cream, and there's a ton of live versions you can find of it online, including one 13 and a half minute rendition that has the bass player Jack Bruce drop out for a few minutes whilst Clapton absolutely rips it up over Ginger Baker's drums. In fact, there's even a point in that same rendition where Ginger Baker drops out and it's just Clapton soloing by himself whilst maintaining the rhythm and tempo of the track. It's seriously impressive. That instrumental track has always been a favourite of mine when it comes to Clapton's guitar playing and it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me because having previously only heard tracks like Wonderful Tonight and Tears in Heaven, it was the first time that I heard a Clapton solo and went, wow, okay, I get it now. Anyway, I decided to make this lesson for you guys today because it's Eric's birthday this coming Saturday the 30th of March and I wanted to pay tribute. So what I'm going to teach you today is a little trick that I learned from listening to Eric solo over tracks like Stepping Out. One thing that Eric often does to make his blues licks stand out is he will throw major sevenths into licks that are based on the minor pentatonic and blues scales. If you know your scale formulas, you'll know that both of those scales contain a minor seventh, not a major or raised seventh. If you don't know what any of that means, I'm gonna do my best to explain it concisely now without getting too bogged down in theory, but if you already understand fundamental music theory, then feel free to skip ahead to the time code on screen now. The minor pentatonic scale has five notes and is derived from a seven note scale called the natural minor. Here is what the G natural minor scale sounds like. As you can see in here, there are seven notes in that scale and the minor pentatonic, like I just said, takes five of those seven notes. It takes the root, third, fourth, fifth and seventh notes. So here's what the G minor pentatonic sounds like. The last note in the formulas for both of those scales is what's called a minor seventh, and that is the name for a type of interval. All an interval is, is just the space between two notes. There are different names given to intervals of varying sizes, and I'm not going to go into all of them in this video, but just know that a minor seventh, when looked at on one string on the guitar, can always be found a tone, which is the distance of two frets lower than the root note in the scale that you're playing. So if I'm playing in the key of G, I know that two frets below fret five on the D string, which is the note G, the root note, two frets below that we have the note F, which in this key is the minor seventh of G. And that's the type of seventh that's found in the natural minor scale and the minor pentatonic scale. So let's get back to the point. Despite the fact that Eric might be soloing over a track that you would use the minor pentatonic and blues scales for, he will throw in major sevenths to his blues licks even though that interval is not found naturally in those scales. Here's an example of what I mean by that. I'm going to play two Eric Clapton style blues licks a couple of times each. The first time that you hear these licks, I'm going to be using minor seventh intervals. Those are the ones that are found naturally in the minor pentatonic and blues scales. The second time you hear me play them, I'm going to throw in some major sevenths to mix it up. So listen out for the difference.
So to me, what you just heard is a small change that makes a big difference. And some of you probably noticed that in the second lick, I played both a major and minor seventh. And that's because you don't have to stick to the major seventh every time that you play a Clapton style blues lick. That's not what I'm telling you to do here because even if you listen to Clapton play over stepping out over that 13 and a half minute version that I was talking about earlier, when you listen to that, if you have a well-tuned ear, you'll notice that he sometimes plays a minor seventh and other times he will play a major seventh. It's a perfect example of breaking the rules of music theory and I use air quotes because it's a common misconception that music theory is a set of rules that dictate which notes you should and should not play. All music theory is to me is a way of conceptualizing the sounds that I hear in my head in a way that allows me to communicate my musical ideas with other musicians who also speak the language of music theory. It is entirely possible that all of the things I've been mentioning about scale formulas and intervals in this video today is not at all what Eric Clapton was thinking about when he was playing these solos. But that's not the point. We can still learn from listening to and analyzing Clapton solos and conceptualizing those sounds that we hear and love with the help of music theory, thus allowing us to replicate those sounds whenever we feel like it when we're soloing over a blues. Anyway, to close off that little music theory rant that I just went on, if you are interested in learning much more about fundamental music theory and how it can drastically improve your guitar playing and all round musicianship, check the links in the description box below for my online guitar courses, Bulletproof Guitar Player Parts 1 and 2. Before I wrap this up, if you're interested in the tone that I was using for this video, I'm going to run you through my setup now. So I'm using the Vertex Steel String Clean Drive stacked with the Nobel's ODR Mini for my drive tone. I'm using a Strymon Blue Sky for some spring reverb and all of those pedals are running into the front end of a Moore Audio Preamp Live which is recorded direct into a Universal Audio Apollo Twin interface. The guitar I'm using is a 2012 Les Paul Standard with burst buckers. It's strung up with Ernie Ball Paradigms 11 to 48 and I have a string butler installed on the headstock which really does help to keep the guitar in tune. So that's something that you can experiment with the next time you're playing over a blues progression. Try throwing in a major seventh to licks where you would normally use a minor seventh from the minor pentatonic and blues scales. And that about does it guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that all of you are getting value out of the free content that I'm putting up on this channel every single week. And if you feel like supporting the work that I'm doing here, it would really mean a lot to me if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and share it with your guitar playing friends on Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, wherever you like. And if you feel like it, it would be really cool if you guys could post videos of you playing these Eric Clapton blues licks to your Instagram accounts. And if you do decide to do that, then please do tag me in the post. My Instagram handle is at Ross Campbell Guitarist, and I'll be sure to watch and leave some feedback. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.